Check out Paddy Power's new and exclusive Cash Card Plus, available to use online, at ATMs, or even down the local. Paddy Power, you beauty. Hello there, welcome along to the Racing Post Football Postcast. I'm Bruce Millington and I'm joined by my Racing Post Sports Desk colleagues, Joe Champion and Dan Childs. Plus, over in Ireland from Paddy Power, we've got Ed Quigley. Right, it's the final week of Premier League action and so many issues to discuss. Who's going to finish ninth? Who's going to finish 13th? Unfortunately, it's all been done and dusted, but we will try and pick out the value for a bunch of dead rubbers. Uh, we'll also be looking at the League One playoff final, which will be extremely competitive on and off the pitch, I dare say. Uh, and even also next Wednesday, we've got Ajax v Man United in the UEFA, no, the Europa League final. I still haven't got used to that. OK, before we get stuck into the matches, let's do the six questions the lads get to each and then get to our answer, the one they wish they were asked. We'll start off, we've got a, a, a Watford fan in the house, as it happens, as uh, luck would have it, Dan Child. So, Dan, who do you want as Watford manager next season? Now, before yeah. you answer that... Ed, give us Paddy Power's latest odds on next Watford manager. Yeah, so it's Claudio Ranieri and Leon Slutsky, uh, both co-fives at 21 to 10, and then it's Marco Silva 3 to 1, Pardew 14s, Pearson 16s, Monk 16s as well, and then Giggs, uh, Neil, Mancini all 20s, and it's 22s bar then. OK then, Dan, first of all, who, yeah. do you, who do you think it should be and who do you think it will be? Uh, I think it should be Marco Silva, and I think there's a good chance it will be as well. I mean, the, the latest reports coming out of Portugal... Uh, there was talk that Porto would be interested in him, but, but apparently uh, he's ruled out a return to Portugal and that he wants to carry on working in England. So uh, he is Watford's first choice, according to the Watford Observer as well, to get the job. So, uh, I mean, he's gonna, not going to be easy to persuade him. There's even talk that Wolves are interested in That's not as far-fetched as it sounds because he's, his agent, uh, Jorge uh, Mendes, is the guy that's been working on bringing a lot of the transfers into Wolves. So, and then they've got a lot of money, Wolves, as well. So uh, there'll be competition there, but... Uh, in He's a done a fantastic job in, in a Hull, hasn't he? I would take him over, over the others at the top of the market there. I mean, for, for Hull to even be in with a chance of staying up that late in the season was, was down to him. I mean, yeah, because I looked at that. I went, obviously, last Sunday to the Palace game, and I looked at that 11, and I just thought, I've, I've barely heard of any of yeah. these, you know? So to fashion that lot into a team that, that did so yeah. well from that... Um, and, and, that, and that, that performance at uh, Palace was, was so unlike the way they've played in a lot of the other games as well. I mean, Palace were, were bang up for that, got the early goal and, and Hull just didn't react very well. They collapsed, didn't they, in that game in the mm, end? But They uh, did. But they so have played a lot better him, yeah? in, in a lot of... Yes, I'd, I'd, I'd love him to, to be the man, yeah. OK, jolly good. Who's been the biggest flops in the Premier League this term, Joe, would you say? I'm talking team here. Ooh, um, Either of the Manchester clubs, I think, probably United, although they have, obviously, over the last few weeks, they've decided to concentrate on the Europa League. But even so, you'd expect the players they've brought, you know, the Pogba, like people like that, Zlatan. Zlatan's done well, but still, yeah, they should at least be top four or at least knocking on the door, which they've not really been. So. Been poor, haven't they? I mean, I don't yeah. think City have been great either, do you? I think, you know, when you look at how talented they can be, they throw in some absolute shockers, don't they? Yeah, no they, they've got obvious it? defensive problems. I think that's what's let them down, really. Um, United don't have such bad defensive issues, but no. they're not as good going forward. Absolutely. I think if you put De Gea in, in goal for Man City, they'd be, uh, they'd be an interesting team this season. And Ed Quigley, on the same vein, who's been the biggest overachievers in the Premier League this season? Who can look back and say, wow, what a season we had? Um, I suppose in terms of overachieving, uh, definitely, definitely, I'd say Burnley would be one of them. Like um, they would have been very close to odds on, I think, to get relegated at the start of the season, and you know they've they've secured it with a few few games to go in the end. And yet, uh, no one really gives the Sean Dyche enough credit, do they? No, they kind of yeah. just accept now that he's a manager who does great things. But why why aren't these people ever given their chance at a really big club? Why is Pulis never given a big chance? Or, or Big Sam? You know, they're good managers, aren't they, Ed? Yeah, no, big time. I, I completely agree. Like, obviously, we just brought up there the, the next Watford manager, but like, I suppose, like, and everybody's raving about Marco Silva, but I suppose, it, like, in a way, people should be talking about Paul Clement, uh, you know, in the similar vein, and he's, pro he's probably hasn't been mentioned. And, like, the, 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 the ironic thing about that is, is Swansea are staying up and Hull are going down, like, but uh, yeah, I, I actually do think um, a lot of uh, English managers don't get their just desserts, to be perfectly honest, you know. Oh, no, absolutely. Okay, Dan, next question for you. Who's the value for the title this season? In 
my column today, I, I made a case for Tottenham. I know that there's the Wembley factor, but yeah, uh, I think, uh, they're, they're the ones for me. Who do you like? I think the Wembley factor is going to, unfortunately, is going to be the, the problem for Spurs. I mean, to, to, they've dropped four points this season at White Hart Lane. Their away record actually is, is the sixth best out of the top six. So there's going to have to be two things. They're going to have to not do as fall away as badly at Wembley as people expect, and they're going to have to do better away why, from home. Why, why should a team suddenly become so much worse at Wembley? What you know? I think um, I mean part of it's psychological, just that you're so used to playing at that, that, that same same ground, and it's uh, the positive feelings of, 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 that are built up. And part of it is the, the size of the pitch. Spurs is one of the smaller pitches in the league. With the pressing game that they play, it really does help them at, at White Hart Lane to close the spaces down and suffocate opposition teams. At Wembley, it's far more difficult to do that without the ball. I suppose my, my, the point I made where it, there could be a negative with Spurs at Wembley is it's just the other teams, their fans, they'll all they'll all put a ring around that and say, "Well, we're playing at Wembley." Yes, they'll, yeah, they'll yeah. Get up especially that, especially they? maybe the not, the not so big teams as well. They're gonna it's, it'll be a huge huge match, and, and if you dropped points, you know, at home to the lesser teams, and that's gonna really hurt your chances. So give us a show of betting, Ed from Paddy Power, and then Dan will say who he thinks are the value next year. Yeah, so this is for the title next season. So uh, City are five to two, Chelsea are hundred to thirty. Sorry, United are threes, and then Tottenham are seventeen to two, um, Liverpool fifteen to two, Arsenal nines, and Everton are sixty sixes. Okay, I would go well for me. There, it has to be Chelsea. I, I know they've got to have the European football aspect. I mean, they're, they're probably going to thicken the squad up in the summer with that in mind. And, and I just think that the two Manchester clubs are, are way too short. You've got to go over the... It's not just the season's underperforming for the two of them. I mean, you look at Man City, you know, outside the top two now for two seasons in a row. Man United are, are going to be outside the top four for a few seasons in a row. I, I just can't... I think that they keep going off every season, hyped up, and, and, and that gets built into the price. What more have Chelsea got to do? I mean, they've got 90 points at this stage. Uh, I just can't see how they can be that big a price. Would you worry about Great Conte manager. or Hazard going, though? Um, I mean, there's been talk about Inter, interested in Conte. I, I, I just think he, uh, Chelsea will, will keep him for They'll at least... They'll pay whatever it needs, Yeah, absolutely, they? yeah. I mean, if any club can keep a manager, it's Chelsea and you know, Hazard? financially. Uh, again, I just think that you know, Chelsea have got the muscle to, to keep hold of their best players, and, and I think they'll be stronger, their squad, rather than weaker start of the next season. Okie doke. Uh, Joe, similar vein to you. Who's the value to go down? Obviously, we don't know who's going to come up out of Huddersfield and Reading. But at this stage, which, which of the Prem teams would you be slightly concerned about? Just uh, before you give us your answer, Ed, perhaps you'd furnish us with some latest relegation prices for yeah, next season. Yeah, so, so Brighton are 6-5, to five, Favs. Then you've got Burnley at 5-4, to four, Watford 7-4, to four, Newcastle 4s, uh, Palace are 9-2, to two, and then West Brom at 6s, uh, bar- well, Bournemouth as well, 7s there as well. Okie doke. Um, yeah, Dan might not like this, but Watford possibly. It, it all depends on who they get in, really, doesn't it? Um, you know, I think Marco Silva's shown what he can do. He would probably be a good appointment, but you know, the other guys on the list, Slutsky. I mean, he's never managed in England. We don't you know his CSK Moscow teams were never that good. His Russia team at the Euros was pretty dreadful. Um, yeah, if he comes in, they could be in trouble. If Silva comes in, they might be a bit better. I expect they'd probably drift out a bit. Um, yeah, at the price is certainly them. Also, whoever comes up in the championship playoff final, I, you know, I don't think they're as good as the two teams that have gone one and two in the championship. So maybe them, but they will probably be Fabs as well. So what price would you be Huddersfield if they won the final, and what price would you be Reading? Just off the top of your head, Ed. Uh, we were talking about this this morning. Uh, just uh, like I'd say, Huddersfield would probably be about the ten to eleven mark. But like I, I don't know if you've seen, but Reading are like are not rated by Asia at all. Like it's it's like judging by the, how Asia rates them, it's amazing that they finished third. So um, yeah, like it just I'd shows Reading, what Asia know about it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> ex- yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I'd say Reading would be could be kind of four to seven kind of. Obviously, that like they might spend during the summer a lot of money, but I don't think they have that kind of money. But uh, yeah, I'd say four to seven kind of, four to six kind of mark. What price are you, West Ham? West Ham are tens. Mm. Okie doke. And the final question goes to you, Ed. Who's won this season? Bookies or punters? Tell uh, the truth. Uh, well, there's, I suppose I, I remember at Christmas time, oh, like we have these newsletters every quarter about how football do and all that. Like I remember that quarter from definitely from Christmas kind of to, to March, we'll say, yeah, it was a disaster for us. But like overall, like I'd say it's it's nip and tuck because like you had a lot of the favourites and the outrights in the UK win as well. Like okay, Chelsea mightn't have been well backed, but Newcastle would have been well backed. Sheffield United would have been well backed, and then you've Pompey who managed to scrape home on the final day of the season as well. So we've got a lot of we had a lot of multiple business that uh, would clicked in clicked in outrights. All right, like you know. 
but surely, I mean, you take a 10 minute market on Everton v Middlesbrough, that's that dwarfs what you do on the anti post, doesn't it? It's all about uh, week it, to week, isn't it? Well, yeah, like, I mean, overall, yeah, like, uh, I'd say we've made money, all right, but let I mean, me tell you, let me ask me this thing which team have been your favorites in terms of making you loads of money? Uh, which team have been who's my done favorite? you favor favors week in week out? Uh, probably probably Monaco, but that's uh, that's a different league. Oh, I, I guess. see. Yeah, that's that's personal. That isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But oh no, from from a Paddy Power perspective, I guess uh, quite possibly United. Like, I mean, they're obviously going off very short at home, and they've well, drawn those home draws. You like? Yeah, don't home you? draws. Yeah, exactly. And that knocks out a lot of um, multiple business as well because people obviously put Man, U, Man United into their multis because they're because they are short prices. Okay, Dan, which of those questions do you want to answer? Uh, I'll take the relegation one, and I. I'll I'd throw Bournemouth into the mix at seven to one. I know I know they play some really good football, score a lot of goals, but they also concede a lot of goals. Eddie Howe's been talking as well this week uh, about how he's going to find it a real challenge to keep hold of his best players as well. I mean, if, if you lost somebody like Josh King, a side that doesn't defend that great, and we're talking about kind of Watford and that, and, and, they, and I know they've they've kind of thrown the towel in the last few weeks, but they did get safe, you know, a few weeks before Bournemouth did. And, and Watford 7-4, to four, Bournemouth 7-1, to one, uh, you know, I, I just think that's a, a little bit too big. I, I, I hear you, bro. Uh, Joe, which question do you want to answer? Um, I'll take the one about the league title. OK. Um, yeah, I, I agree with what Dan said. Chelsea, you know, they've got 90-odd points. They, they don't have to improve, really. Everyone else, bar maybe Tottenham, has to improve. By quite a lot yeah. as well. Yeah, especially, you know, the Manchester clubs are way off that, that standard at the moment, consistency-wise, more than anything. Um, yeah, just there's plenty to like about Chelsea, and they should arguably be a shorter price. They probably would be if they were called Man City. Yeah, no, fair enough. And also, when you look at what Chelsea need to bring in, you'd probably want another striker, wouldn't you? But Batshuayi's shown a little bit of promise, hasn't he? So, you know, he doesn't what, rate him, I don't think, No, does he, but, but where, you know, where do they really need to bring people in? I mean, you know... Costa's the question, isn't it? Costa's yeah. been strongly linked with going to China. I mean, that, that'll be a hole that needs filling. You know, probably Lukaku would fill it pretty well, though, if they got him. So. Absolutely. OK, Ed, which question do you want to answer? Yeah, I'll take the relegation one as well. Um, uh, I think Stoke um, look decent price myself at eight. Like, I mean, they've had a pretty limp season, like, and they're... Like, you know, again, they got beaten last week by Arsenal 4 1. And I think Mark Landon was uh, was alluding to the fact that Stoke fans are getting kind of annoyed with Mark Hughes at the minute. I just think they have a lot of kind of, they've, they have a lot of money. Like, obviously, they're owned by Peter Coates. But, like, I just, I just don't know. Barry Heaney and all these kind of lads and Arnautovic, I don't know if they have the right attitude for a good, for when, when the weather's not nice or when, when the chips are down kind of thing. Like, well, um, if you can't yeah. do it on a, on a wet weekend at <laughs> yeah. Stoke, it's yeah, no exactly. good being a Stoke player, is <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. They yeah, have to go so through that. that every week. So you might, yeah. you fancy a little bit of Stoke at eight. Yeah. Interesting yeah. stuff. Okay, yeah. let's get stuck straight in with the football. Tonight, um, Sky have got all these matches they're showing us every week. They probably thought, all right, let's go out with a bang. And they didn't realise that the season of Peter out so badly. So the latest dead rubber is Leicester versus Tottenham. Very quickly, lads, who do you fancy? We'll get a show of betting and a tip from Ed Quigley first. Um, yeah, so Leicester 11-4, to the draw is 27-10, to 10, and Spurs are 19-20. to 20. Go on then, Ed, hit us, you go first. What's going to happen? Yeah, well, like Wes Morgan, uh, Hoot, King, Drinkwater, Mendy are all out. Uh, some of them mean more than others to the to Leicester starting 11. Tottenham have a uh, full-back crisis with Rose, Trippier and Walker out. Yeah, I just think, I just think with Kane going for top goal scorer, over two and a half is the way to go here, uh, along with the defensive frailties that both teams have with those absences. Don't say Kane, right? I'm on Lukaku. He's the last thing that can bring me a bit of anti-post joy. So if Kane scores, that's going to be horrible. What do you think, Joe? Um, yeah, I, I don't really fancy Spurs for this. Um, you know, Leicester have been pretty good at home since uh, Shakespeare took over. I think they've uh, they've won six of their last seven. The only one they didn't win was against Atletico Madrid. And um, what's the way to to bet then here? Double chance. Uh, yeah, well, five to six, I think it was uh, Leicester or draw, or um, you know, even if you fancy Leicester at eleven to four. Um, Ed's already touched on the defensive problems, defensive uh, injury problems. So maybe even Leicester, a bigger price, uh, Leicester, both teams to score. OK, no. Dan, what about you? Yeah, I think, I mean, Spurs, I think the intensity might drop a little bit here. I mean, the, the, the big, even though the title was gone, that Man United game, you could see how much it meant to the players to, to win that game, the, the last match at the lane. I was all over, so I really fancied Spurs at shade of odds on there. At shade of odds on at Leicester, I think you go the opposite way here. I think Leicester very strong at home. Uh, as, as Joe has mentioned, I mean the only the only uh, draw out of the last uh, seven or eight games at home was the one-one against Atletico Madrid. All the others they've won, including Liverpool three-one, Sevilla two-nil, to, uh, to beating good sides at home in that run. 
Um, Spurs, as I mentioned before, worst away record of the top six. Uh, I think they're worth taking on here. And um, as well as being a Watford fan, really, uh, the number one team in Dan Charles's heart is Tottenham. So when he <laughs> opposes them, you have to listen. League One playoff final on Saturday, Bradford versus Millwall. I should think this is pretty competitive on the betting front, isn't it, uh, Ed? Yeah, it's uh, Bradford 7-4, to four, the draw is 2-1, to one, and Millwall are 17-10. Can you split them, Ed? Yeah, well, like I, I actually can. I think there's a there's a pretty big rick here, to be honest, in the industry. Uh, like Asia definitely rates Millwall better than Bradford, but yet you can get evens on uh, Millwall to 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 get promoted. We're currently five to six both teams. I, like that's that, that's okay at that price, but like that like Millwall at evens is too big in my opinion. You're and in seven, love with Millwall, are you? There? Yeah, the seventeen to ten is too big in the match price as well. I I, I personally think no, not everybody agrees with me, but um, yeah, I, like I just think Millwall should be fives and Millwall all the way for me here, and I I've backed it accordingly. Like, aye aye, Joe. Um, yeah, I, I found it very difficult to split them. Um, I was just looking at their records uh, at home. They've got equal points this season, 45 each, and I think there's two goals in the goal difference. They've both conceded the same amount. Bradford's slightly better away, so maybe the neutral venue will suit them a bit more. Um, yeah, and Millwall, they, they won at Scunthorpe, but they weren't, you know, they took advantage of some very sloppy defending from Scunthorpe. So, yeah, I'd, I'd be erring on the side of Bradford, but I don't think it would be particularly high scoring. So, you know, maybe a draw, half-time Bradford, full-time, something like that. Radio, Dan? Tight game, but I would I would go with Bradford, actually. I, I, I just think in, the, in the, these big games, I like to be on the side with the best defence. I think it, it, often the team with the best defence could win these tight games. Bradford, 43 goals conceded this season. Millwall, 57 goals in the league this season they've conceded. So it's quite a, quite a difference there. As I've mentioned before as well, I, I fancy Bradford at the start of the playoffs. They're used to playing in front of big crowds, get near to 20,000 in, in their home games this season. That might help them. Millwall, so maybe psychologically, they lost a final to Barnsley, another Yorkshire side. 3-1 last season. They've been to Wembley a lot this they, uh, in this 21st century, haven't they? They have, really yeah. It's not a rare one for them. But I mean, often often not successful though as mm. well. And that's, uh, I just think, I mean, I know it's a basic way to look at it, being in the league, they've got six more points over the course of the season. Uh, goal difference overall was 10 better. And, and you know, the, to me, the, they're the value, really. Damn, uh, Ed, you you were very forthright about Millwall. What, what's the clue there? What, what Drill down into your thinking a little bit. Why, why, why are you well, so sweet on Millwall? It's just, I suppose, the, the like in Asia they have all these models that like uh, basically have a, a multitude of variables in them, like um, with shot stats and shots on target and quality of the shots and where they're being taken from and all that kind of stuff would be would have the most weighting. And Millwall obviously definitely score higher than Bradford in that. Now I know um, Dan just said there that Bradford have scored more goals and all that and are tighter defensively, but like Millwall definitely underperformed by finishing sixth this season and Bradford probably overperformed. And I think a lot of bookmakers are just going off the league table, as in Bradford finished third, Millwall finished sixth. And um, yeah, I, I think you definitely won't be seeing, uh, like I'd be very surprised if Millwall, you still get evens on Millwall on uh, Saturday. Um, you think the market will move, do you? I think the market will move, yeah. I think it's currently wrong, like, yeah. OK, competition time every Thursday. We ask a question, giving listeners and viewers the opportunity of winning a free £25 or €25 Euro bet, courtesy of our sponsors, Paddy Power. Last week's question was, which two clubs will contend the Champions League final next month? The answer, of course, is Real Madrid and Juventus. And the winner is Jay from Southampton. Oh, we've gone all blind date now. We Jay from so we don't have surnames anymore. Well, Jay, I'm sure you know who you are. I shouldn't think too many Jays from Southampton entered, but you were the one who came out first, and you win a twenty-five pound free bet, which will be deposited into your Paddy Power account. Well played. Today's question: Which club finished bottom of the Premier League this season? Just tweet your answer using the hashtag #Postcast, and we will reveal the winner in next Thursday's Football Postcast, when we will also be looking at the FA Cup final. Here's Paddy's latest offer. It's two up, you win. We'll pay out immediately if the team you back goes two goals up. Available in all Premier League and La Liga matches. Not available in shops. TNC Supply 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. OK, let's get stuck into the final round of Premier League games. They'll kick off at three o'clock on Sunday. And Sky have chosen Liverpool versus Middlesbrough and Watford versus Manchester City as their TV games. Quick question for you, lads. How ma that means that how many of Liverpool's 38 league games will have been live on TV this season? You asked me this yesterday. Right, you're, you're out. You're disqualified. <laughs> Dan uh, and Ed? 20, 22, I'll say, just as a guess. What are you saying, Ed? 20. 29. <laughs> 29, isn't that amazing? <laughs> 
Incredible. OK, we'll start with them, though. It's Liverpool versus Middlesbrough. Liverpool are uh, looking good for a top four slot. They couldn't really have handpicked their opponents better, I wouldn't have thought. And I should imagine that they are chronically short. Yeah, they're uh, sixes on. Uh, the draw is 13 to 2, and Borough is 16 to 1. Uh, uh, Joe, would you be in a rush to back Liverpool at sixes on? No. Have you ever backed anything at sixes on? No. No. Yeah. It's not really the sort of price that you, appeals it's, to you. So, is there a way of making money out of this game? It's not going to be very interesting to watch without a bet, is it? Well, you've got to have a look at, you know, the other markets, probably away from, you know, goal markets, goal scorer markets. Um, yeah, I certainly don't fancy um, Middlesbrough at all. So, um, you know, Liverpool's probably just going to win. It's probably a case of how many they can win by. You know, they haven't been fantastic recently, but they've been scoring enough goals. Um, what are we going to go with them? Uh, Have you got a clue? Have you got an angle? Yeah, uh, Philip Coutinho to score first. Um, I think it's at 11 of four with Paddy Power. But I like their um, their goal scorer insurance market, where if he scores at any time, you get your money back. Oh, well, that's good. Twenty-three isn't it? Yeah. to ten. Oh, I see. So you take a slightly shorter price yeah. with the insurance. Yeah, that's that seems Ed, sensible. Ed probably knows more it? than me, but is um, that right, Ed? You can confirm yeah, no, that, can that, you? That's right, yeah. It's twenty-three to ten as well, and just Coutinho first as well without the insurance is um, one hundred to thirty. One hundred to thirty. There you go. Okay. So would you go? Would you gamble and go all in, or would you take the insurance? Do you think, Joe? I think they've got a few threats, haven't they? So I'd probably just take the insurance. I mean, Coutinho's got six goals in his last eight games, and and one of those games he came off after a quarter of an hour against Watford. So he's in, he's in great form in front of goal. I I don't mind that. Jolly good, uh, Dan. What do you think? Uh, it's a very tough one to get an angle on. I, I've just, you know, maybe Middlesbrough won't be, you know, completely rubbish. And, and I've, I've just looked at uh, the, some of the goal scoring markets there, and I looked at Negredo. He's been finishing the season pretty well. He's been, you know, he scored nine goals this season. Which, um, I mean, incidentally, if you look at the Liverpool scorers this season, the top scorers, you've got Firmino, 12, who I think was injured last week. I don't know whether he'll be available or not. Mane, 11, who's out as well. And so that only leaves um, Coutinho left, who's got who, with 12 goals, who's got more than Negredo of the two sides. So I was looking at any time prices. Negredo's 5-1 to one to score any time. He's quite good in the air. Liverpool, as we know, have got a, a well-known uh, problem with set pieces, defending them. They've conceded 18 at home, which is the highest of any team in the top seven. So that they're not they're a side that are not watertight at home. And I compared his prices. I'm looking at um, Emre Chan's 11 to five to score any time. Milner's two to one to score any time. And a grade 05 to one. I, I, to me, that's uh, you know a little bit of an outrider and worth I like, taking. I like that angle, Dan. Very clever, Ed. What do you think? Is there a way in here? Yeah, I think there is. Um, it's no secret that Liverpool obviously struggle against teams that defend deep. And one thing you have to say about Borough is they're good defensively. They just can't score. Um, and like Liverpool have struggled in home matches, I think, recently, like against Bournemouth, Palace and Southampton. And I, I don't know, just, I, I think they might feel a sort of bit, a bit of pressure there coming towards the end of the season at home that they don't feel when they're playing away. I think Liverpool will win. I think they will secure top four. But I think Borough plus two at seven to five makes appeal to me. And also um, time of first goal after the 23rd minute um, at evens. Looks big too. Righty ho, three o'clock also at Watford, Vicarage Road. It's uh, Watford versus Manchester City. And again, Man City are going to be double short here, aren't they, Ed? Yeah, Watford are 17 to 2, the draw is 15 to 4, and City are 4 to 11. Ed, uh, no, we'll start with you, Joe, sorry. Who'd you like? Um, I think City will probably just go and win the game, um, but I wouldn't be backing them at the prices. Uh, we've talked enough about their defensive problems, so maybe City to win and both teams to score. Um, Watford have, you know, they're. They've ended the season with a whimper. Mazzari is on his way. So, you know, we, they're probably not going to be up for it. They, had, they were up for it against Chelsea, weren't they? Oh, that was a good game, that. Yeah. I enjoyed that very much. They were flying in, getting red cards yeah. and all sorts. I, I did miss that. Oh, it, was, it was good. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. it was excellent. I really enjoyed that game. So, uh, City and both for you, Joe, yeah? yeah. Dan, who do you like? Uh, yeah, I think the, the goals angle is one to go. I think Watford, as you mentioned against Chelsea, they were maybe they knew at the time that Mazzari was on his way out and that's produced a better performance. And last home game, teams had generally want to put in some kind of performance. They've got materially though at the back. I mean, they lost Prodel at the end of that game to a red card. They had four centre-backs out already. That's five now. They're left with only Mary Apparu, who you'll know as a former Palace player. He's the only centre-back left now for Watford. So... Uh, 
it's going to be a right mishmash at the back. But then Where's again, Cathcart? Is he not about? Cathcart's one of the five that's really? out. Cathcart, Prodel, Britsos, uh, Cabasali, Cabal, all, all out, five centre-backs. So, Will uh, Frostron? <laughs> Will Frostron not available. Oh, uh, they'll probably have to tuck the, 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 the two wing-backs. They'll have to come in as, as left and right-sided centre-backs. Then they've got to find a couple of wing-backs, though. So it's, uh, it's not looking great. But then again, City often play with them and make shift defenders as well. So uh, the thing that gets them out of trouble is that they're far better going forward than Watford are. But, but uh, I think there'll be goals. City are not reliable at the back. One clean sheet in uh, six away games, uh, three clean sheets in 12 in total. So well, I they think... were a freak incident away from chucking it away against Leicester, weren't well, they? Well, exactly, yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I think the goals route here and the, the, just the two bets there, both teams to score evens looks big and City and both teams to score 15 to 8. Righty-ho. Um, Ed, what's your view on this one? Yeah, I agree. I think there'll be plenty of goals in this game. I mean, Sidley, City have t tied up top four effectively, um, and like it's like City attack like crazy. Nor in, in a normal game, like they uh, they'll go. I'd say they'll just go up mental here. And uh, obviously, Prodel's out there, just as Dan just said. Another blow for um, Watford. Look, the over is eight to thirteen. Looks, it looks, it, it's probably big, but like I mean, it's not going to appeal to every everybody. But like I just thought, Gabriel Jesus at any time at eleven to ten, I thought he looked unreal the other night, and he looks, he's got that selfish streak in him as well. Um, to, he, to, he takes shots from everywhere. And, did you like, like that back heel he did? I know there was an offside, but did you see that? There was that diagonal ball played in, and he just, it was incredible what he did. He just suddenly did this like donkey kick, and it just went wide. Now, as it happened, it was flagged for offside, but he didn't know that. He's got some skill, that boy, hasn't he? Yeah, no, I, like, exactly. And, like, I think if, 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 like, Aguero doesn't start now, he probably will, like, but, like, that 11 10 becomes even a better bet. Like, so, yeah, Gabriel Jesus at 11 10. And he takes the pens now as well, doesn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, it looks a good bet. Great stuff. Let's get the naps. This will not be beaten. And we lived up to that uh, Steve Palmer uh, message last week, didn't we, Ed? Four out of four. It was absolutely easy, wasn't it? Um, Mark's, Mark Langdon's net was Bayern Munich, who trailed 4-2 with about a minute to go, and they won 5-4. But uh, So there was, I think it was an 18-1 to fourfold. So no pressure, lads, but we've got something to live up to. So, Joe, you start us off. Um, I like Leicester at home to Bournemouth. I think they're 5-6. Uh, to six. I've already spoke about Leicester's good home record, and, uh, you know, Bournemouth aren't great away. I think um, you know they they picked up 14 points out of 45 away from home this season. They beat Sunderland last time, but they weren't great. They won one nil. Sunderland had more shots, and you know if you let Sunderland have more shots, you're probably in a bit of trouble. Leicester City Football Club for Joe Champion. Who for you, Dan Charles? I'm going to go take a chance on Everton not to lose at Arsenal. I don't think there's a massive difference between the teams, and the price uh, nine to five on the double chance Everton will draw. I just think that a lot of that is down to, to Arsenal being perceived as needing to win the game. Obviously, they do need to win the game, but you can imagine the atmosphere if uh, it, what we've mentioned before, if, if Man City and, and Liverpool uh, get in front in their games and are, com are comfortable, the atmosphere will go as flat as a pancake. The 13,000 in the ground will start leaving, <laughs> won't they? Well, so, uh, so if Everton are you know, professional and focused, which is not a certainty at this stage of the season, I just think nine to five that they don't uh, lose the game is a bit too big. Righty-ho. Ed, who do you like? Yeah, I'm going to go with Millwall for all the reasons I highlighted at the top of the show. At 17 to 10, just this goes off short and it's just too big and it's a value buy. OK, I think all the air has come out of the whole City balloon now and I think Spurs at 4 to 6 will uh, put a cherry on the top of uh, what has been a very good season for them. So it is, let's reiterate, it's uh, Millwall for Ed, it's Everton or the draw for Dan, it's Leicester for Joe and I'm going to go with Tottenham. So hopefully that fourfold will come in. Here's Paddy Power's new and exclusive kicker feature. Simply place a bet, add a kicker, and if your team wins big, you'll win bigger. 18 plus, gambleaware.co.uk. TNCs apply. Bruce Millington, Joe Champion, Dan Childs and Paddy Power's Ed Quigley are looking ahead to next Wednesday. It's the Europa League final taking place in Stockholm. It's Ajax of Amsterdam versus Manchester United of Manchester and Ed Quigley, just how sure are Jose Mourinho's men? Uh, they're 10 to 11. The draw is 13 to 5 and Ajax are 29 to 10. Righty ho, Joe. Lead on. What do you think is going to happen here? I started off looking for a way to get Man United beat because they've just been so unimpressive at times this season. But I now think the 10 to 11 is too big against this Ajax team. They're a really talented young side, but in a European final, I, I think they might struggle. And, um, you know, they... Their average age is 22.7. That's the whole squad. If you're young enough, you're good enough, Joe. Look at you. 
Well, yeah, that's true. Burning it up on the Racing Post <laughs> I'm, Sports I'm not desk. that young now, I'm afraid. Oh, comparatively, you are. Well, I, I wouldn't get in the Ajax team, I'm sorry. No, I'm sure you wouldn't. But, um, <laughs> so you think they could just get, the, the occasion could be too big for them? I think so. Also, um, Ajax, there they're away games in the Europa League. They've, they've won one of them this season. They've drawn three. They've lost their last three. And they they just don't probably aren't quite good enough at the moment. And hopefully the team stays together, but it's Ajax, so no doubt a lot of them will be, be sold on. But yeah. So what do you think then? How, how should we back it? Just straight Man U? I think straight Man U to, to win 10. in 90 minutes. OK. Yeah. Dan, what do you think of Ajax? Where are their strengths and where are their weaknesses? I think their strengths is going forward, score, score a lot of goals. They've got Dolberg, the young Danish striker up front, very good player. Uh, David Klaassen, uh, the attacking midfield player, has been linked with you know a lot of the, the, the top clubs as well. I still think there's a lot to be proved uh, from their side. I mean, you, you look at the, the Dutch league, the strength of it. I mean, the second top scorer in Holland this season is Ricky van Wolfswinkel, who, 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 as we know, has uh, Norwich, failed, failed at Norwich, was, was bombed out of Norwich and, and, has, and has gone and finished second top scorer. I mean, we know about the problems Janssen's had since coming over. I just don't think it's a particularly strong league. Bayern order have won the league above Ajax by a point. Um, they lost 4-0 at Old Trafford uh, when they played there in the group stage. I know they, they nicked a 1-0 at home to United at the start of the group stage when United might not have been taking it seriously. As this competition's gone on, they've been really focused on this. And I just think to, to go by the recent performances of United is a bit of a red herring, really. You've got to look at how they're performing in the big European games. The last, the Celta Vigo home game, they were playing a bit of a holding pattern there, really. The away game when they won 1-0, they were really impressive, actually. And they should have won by more goals in, in that game. I don't think this is any tougher, to be honest. Uh, Ajax, uh, talk about the young side. They had five players, 21 or younger, in, in the semi-final. Uh, Veer Givers banned. He got red-carded in, in the second leg against Leon. He's one of their more experienced players. So that his replacement, uh, Yaro Riederweld, is uh, another 21-year-old. So they, they, you're looking at six youngsters in a final. I just think it's too much against the experience that, that uh, United have What's got. What's the bet, then? Uh, United to win at 10 to 11. I, I, I look at Ajax who they've played and the only really tough opponent there is Leon and, and they didn't have Lacaz Lacazette who's their main man uh, fit for the first leg when they lost 4-1. So I just think Man United at 10 to 11 is a really good bet actually. What do you reckon, Ed? Yeah, I'd probably echo both of what the lads have said there. Like, I, I'd agree entirely. Like, Ajax, I don't know, seem to produce these young, exciting teams every few years. It's phenomenal stuff. But, um, yeah, they even have pa Patrick Clivert's son, I think, playing with them at the minute. But, yeah, like, I, I, I haven't watched much of the Dutch early visa now this year. But, like, I did watch their game against Leon, And they did carve them apart in Holland. Like, but, like, they were... The, the, defend, the defending on both sides now was pretty hapless that night. I, I, I like they've only and as Joe mentioned about their way form in Europa, like they've actually only kept a clean sheet twice away from home, and that was against Jablonek and Legia Warsaw. Like so, yeah, I see goals in this. I I can see them causing United problems though offensively with the with the talent they have up top. But um, over two and a half goals for me at evens definitely it's a bigger price than the ten to eleven on United. And I think it'll click. And I think if you do fancy United, United and both teams to score at sixteen to five, and you're getting a bit of extra extra juice in your price. Who's well. the goal threat for United these days? Remind me, Ed. Uh, I suppose Rashford, really, isn't it? Um, you know, he's he's definitely been their leader in terms of uh, Europa, and I suppose Mkhitaryan's banged in a few for them as well. He's got, away from yeah, home. he's got about five goals. Mkhitaryan in the Europa, he's actually performed better in the Europa League than in the Prem. Actually, it's a quick chance for each of you to really make a name for yourselves. Just give me the scoreline, Joe. Three-one, Man United. Uh, One-nil, Man United. Ed. Yeah, I'll, go, I'll, I'll agree with you all. 3-1 Man United, Jeff. OK, excellent stuff. Thank you very much, chaps. Don't forget to take part in a competition in which you could win a £25 or €25 Euro bet. All you've got to do is tell us who finished bottom of the Prem. You just tweet it with the hashtag postcast and you could win. We will announce the winner next Thursday when we will also be looking ahead to the FA Cup final between Chelsea and Arsenal plus the Championship playoff final between Huddersfield and Reading. So join us next Thursday. Check out Paddy's new kicker feature. If you fancy your team to run riot, add a kicker to your bet. And if your team win big, you win bigger. Paddy Power, you beauty.